On a very special July 4th edition of Talk of the Town, I'm joined today by three local veterans who talk about their service in the military and in civilian life. I'm joined by Norm Blanchard, who served in the U.S. Army, Jim Gibson, who served in the U.S. Navy, and Joe Morton in the U.S. Marine Corps, and we will talk about their service to God and country on today's edition of Talk of the Town. From the U.S. Bank Studios in downtown Cambridge, Ohio, it's Talk of the Town. And welcome to a very special edition of Talk of the Town. I'm ABC News Director Daniel Barnett, and today we're going to be taking uh, time to sit down with some local veterans in honor of July 4th, Independence Day, to talk about what their service has meant to them and how it's impacted them in our community today. So we're going to start off with Norm Blanchard. Uh, Norm is now the Executive Director of the Cambridge Guernsey County Community Improvement Corporation. Long title. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but uh, before that, uh, in addition to your many other positions in the community, uh, two years of active duty in the U.S. Army and 28 years as an Army Reservist. So Norm, thanks for joining me today. I appreciate Glad it. Glad to be here. Thanks for asking me. It's an honor. So let's talk a little bit about how you got involved with the military and, and your service. Uh, you were in the Vietnam era. That's correct. correct? Well, you know, what happened, Daniel, too, my, I, we, my wife was a high school sweetheart. We knew when I went to college, Vietnam was, uh, was, was heating up and mm -hmm. it was probably going to be drafted. Yeah. And I thought, you know, I, I, I want to serve my country, but if I'm going to do it, I'd like to go in as an officer. We, if we have a child, mm -hmm. you, know, you make a living wage. And right. so I went to ROTC and uh, graduated from, from Miami, went right into the service. Uh, six months at Fort Lee, Virginia to train up and then a year in Vietnam and mm -hmm. back to Fort Monroe, Virginia. So that's how it started out. Um, and my intent at that time was to, the reserve commitment was four years after that, but I enjoyed it. I loved, I loved command and it was an opportunity uh, for me to, to give back to my country while I was doing the things that I liked to do in the school business at that time. Right. Financially, as a school superintendent or a school administrator, the reserve was a nice supplement to that sure. and uh, and so I was able to do that over the years and had uh, command at every level and finally retired in about 95 I guess what well, seems a long, long time ago <laughs> as a colonel so it, uh, it you know beyond that now just to be able to go back and say that you're able to accomplish that and I'm proud of that and I, I love this country and I was gave it 29 years of my life. Absolutely. Well and obviously uh, you know even after your uh, retirement from the reserves you've continued in many ways to give back to your community, whether it's through your, your service as a school superintendent, as an educator, now at helping to bring business to Guernsey County. How do you feel your experience in the military has informed your service to your community afterwards? Well, it has a lot of impacts. Uh, I, I think, Daniel, I remember when I left Miami as a football player, I remember my coach walking out with me saying, Norm, no matter where you go in life, there's no people like football people because they've been through things you, that you, other people won't experience. Well, he was a little bit wrong about that because having completed all the time that I did in the military, you, you begin to form a brotherhood with other guys and now women who have served that people don't understand. Uh, I mean, if you, look, if you go to Fourth of July parades or veterans parades and you see guys walking who can hardly walk anymore but they're in those parades because they're they're living and remembering things that if you haven't gone through that you can't understand it and it's a brotherhood that goes on forever so w when i go to lowe's and i say hey i would like my veterans discount i'm proud to say that they'll always say thank you for your service mm -hmm. and I, I think that's important and i think with young people today, maybe one of the reasons they don't appreciate this country as much as they, they possibly could is because they've not had to fight for it mm -hmm. or, or seen other people actually give their lives. Um, and that, that's what motivates me. And I, I mean, I love the leadership of it. I loved it as a, as a school superintendent. I think the military prepares you for that. Mm -hmm. um, no matter, no matter what I've ever done in civilian life, I've always said, is this worse than what I did in the military in terms of training? No, it's not, because what you go through is tough, but it makes you tougher, and I, I like that. Now, as we said, you were a Vietnam era war vet. Did you, yes. Uh, there was a hugely tumultuous political climate after the war, and obviously some Vietnam vets weren't treated so well when they returned. They weren't. Do you feel that has changed, first of all, and second of all, do you see any of that happening with some of the young men and women who are coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan? I, I've not seen it. I think, Daniel, Vietnam was a very unpopular war. It was a war that we didn't stand to, it seemed like, gain anything from it. Mm -hmm. And then there was a long period of time when there were, where there were no conflicts. 
So you had kids, and I remember speaking on Veterans Day at, at the high schools and mm -hmm. saying to kids, you really don't have connection in a lot of cases with, with unless they're older guys who have served in the military. Right. So now with young people, again, volunteering, going to Afghanistan, they were in Desert Storm. There, I think there's a feeling, again, that we've got young people now who know what it's like to defend this country. So I think that that part of it's coming back. Uh, the sad part about it is our country is so divided, I, mm -hmm. I think we lose some of that because patriotism, I mean, I get a tear to my eye every time they play the national anthem. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I know people who have given their lives so that thing could fly, and I think that that flag could fly. And I think young people need to get that appreciation, and unfortunately, sometimes it takes conflict to get that, and I think we get some of it. Now, obviously, with Independence Day, uh, by the time this show airs, it will have happened or will be going on, but there's this saying that freedom isn't free and and i think we hear it so much that it becomes sort of cliche but how has your experience made that all the more true it's it's just when you when you when you go through the experiences you get as a military person you see i think you see society from the other side you you, you have people who are willing to put their lives on the line to preserve what we take for granted every day mm -hmm. um, and it's sometimes, you know, like sometimes you get old and cynical. And I see a lot of people who are enjoying the, the fruits of this country, and they should. We, we, we should. But I think that you have to, you can't forget that this wasn't just given to us. People earned it. And I think the more that we can impress on our young people today that you, that you, you have to understand what went before you. And there's some excellent, ex excellent examples of that. Um, I mean, and you... Um, I've seen videos of coaches now who have taken time to show their players, look, when they play the national anthem, you don't fidget around. You don't look at the floor. You don't get on a knee. You that's your flag. You're playing basketball because people who are sitting and they, they have veterans out there who are sitting there earn this for you. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a relationship there that we need to foster. And, I, and, and to me, there's, there's just nothing like it. And if you haven't experienced it, then you don't know. And is it easy? No, it's not easy. Uh, and I didn't believe me. I would never push myself over as a war hero. I'm not. I served, and I'm proud of it. I had a lot of commands. I'm proud of those. But there are people who were in the bullets every day, mm -hmm. and only they can tell you what that's like because that's that, that's tough. And uh, and they've earned the right to be cynical, maybe about the way things get sometimes. Well, it's, but, it's uh, perspective. It is perspective, I Daniel. That's exactly what it is. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, Norm, I appreciate you taking the time to sit down with us today. Um, as I said, Norm Blanchard a U.S. active service Army member for two years, 28 years in the reserve, and uh, now is the executive director of the Cambridge Guernsey County Community Improvement Corporation. Uh, Norm, thank you for your service in the military. Daniel, thank you for your service I'm to this community. I'm proud of it. Thanks for having me. And uh, it's been a pleasure sitting down with you today. Always, Daniel. We will be back with more to talk about uh, July 4th, Independence Day, and veteran service right after this on Talk of the Town. Talk of the Town will be right back. Learning Jungle on Main Street, formerly Main Street School Supply, is located in downtown Cambridge just west of the courthouse on Wheeling Avenue. They have a huge location full of educational resources and toys that teach, as well as entertain. They feature a large inventory of gifts for children of all ages, and you just have to check out their selection of stuffed animals, puppets, games, and much more. The Learning Jungle on Main Street, downtown Cambridge, has layaway for your convenience and is the area's only specialty toy store. A world of knowledge is waiting for you at their front door. The Old Country Loft in Byesville is full of quality country primitives and a whole lot more. Ruth Dixon and her crew bring you the things you need to decorate your home with country charm and warmth. The Old Country Loft, corner of Main and Glass Avenue, Byesville. Check out Talk of the Town on Facebook. Go to facebook.com slash talkofthetownshow and stay up to date. And welcome back to Talk of the Town. I am now sitting down with Jim Gibson. Uh, Jim was a, in the Navy during the Vietnam War from 67 to 71, uh, now serves as part of the Guernsey County Veterans Council Honor Guard, uh, aviation ordinanceman second class, that's correct? That's correct, <laughs> yes. And uh, Jim, I want to thank you for joining me today as well. Well, it's an honor to be here. Thank you, Daniel. So Jim, uh, I asked this to Norm. I'm going to ask it to Joe after you. Tell me about your service. Uh, how did you get involved and, and what was your involvement? Well. Um, as you said, I, I 
served during the Vietnam War, and it was a very, very unpopular time. Um, the, the question you ask is why, and my classmates asked that when I told them 50 years ago mm -hmm. that I was going to the Navy, and they just couldn't understand that. And I didn't have an answer for them at that point. I really didn't, didn't know why. But it took me back to my childhood, and, and there are people that come into your life that make an impact that you have no idea. And for me, my dad was the big influence. Mm -hmm. uh, every 4th of July, Armed Forces Day, Veterans Day, Memorial Day, we were at the courthouse. Mm -hmm. There were parades. And as you stood there and you watched these guys, the World War I vets were still around, the World War II vets, Korean War vets had just gotten home in the middle 50s. Right. And, and you saw a look about those guys that was different than the rest of the people that were standing there, and you couldn't put your finger on it. But it had an impact, mm -hmm. and I didn't understand it until I started to serve. And I understood what it was then. There was a look on their faces, there was a look of pride, but there was a look of love, a love for their country and a love for their fellow man. And those kinds of things go with you, and it continues to go with you. And as I stand out here on Veterans Day and Memorial Day, I'm hoping that the kids that see me standing there see that same look. Mm -hmm. That's why I served, because yeah, I love this country. And I, and I want to come back to, to learn more about the Honor Guard, but okay. I, I want to ask you, how, how has your military service impacted your civilian life? How has it encouraged you to give to your community? Obviously, you've been in this community for many years and, and given. Yeah, for the, for only for the four years that I served in the Navy, I've lived here in Cambridge all my life. Mm -hmm. I grew up here. Uh, I was gone from 67 to 71 and came back here, went to work for the phone company. My background in the Navy uh, was uh, heavy on electronics. Mm -hmm. uh, I was able to go to work for the phone company, use some of the training that I had, had received in the Navy. Mm -hmm. uh, so. I was able to transition, uh, you know, to a, to a civilian job and and uh, and still stay in the community. Um, but it comes back to what I saw in those guys, mm -hmm. making you want to give something back. Mm -hmm. uh, for all the years I worked, I couldn't do much. Uh, I got involved in Kiwanis later on, and and we started a program of doing veterans in the schools for Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. And you could go and you could share with these young people. Uh, you know, your experience, uh, what this country means. And that was the beginning, I guess, of giving back. Uh, I spoke, or I played taps at a Qantas meeting one day, and a gentleman from the uh, VFW was a guest speaker for Veterans Day. Mm -hmm. And he said, wow, he said, uh, what are you doing? And I said, well, funny thing, I'm getting ready to retire. And he said, oh, really? So would you like to come play taps for funerals? Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, I think I can do that. And I started doing that in 2002, and mm -hmm. I've been doing that ever since. So there's a lot of opportunities to give back. Yeah. So. Now let's talk about that, because I think people, to you this question is obvious. For the person who hasn't served, or maybe to the community at large, it's not as obvious. Why is it important that those ceremonies are observed for a veteran's funeral? Well, a as a veteran, I owe that to the person that we're providing that service for. Mm -hmm. uh, we say that we're brothers, and, and you hear that all the time, but unless you've experienced it, mm -hmm. you don't understand it. That is truly my brother or my sister that we're putting into, that, into the ground that day. And that loss that the family's feeling is the same loss that we feel while we do that. And, and it sounds cliche, but, but as a veteran, that's, that's the feeling. It's that look that I saw on those guys' faces. Mm -hmm. That's the love for their fellow man, the love for their brother that they served with. And unless you've experienced it, you just really don't understand the feeling. Yeah. So. Now, let's talk about, um, about TAPS, about the 21-gun salute, the, these, these things that uh, everyone knows about, that they okay. exist. But why are those the ceremonies? Well, first of all, it's not a 21-gun salute. Uh, it's called a three-round rifle volley. Gun salutes are done with cannon. Mm -hmm. They began with the Navy back a long time ago. It was a way to recognize uh, a head of state, 
uh, a high-ranking officer as the ships would pass they would fire a salute of cannon okay based in 21 19 17 15 and then that was it okay uh, it's a three-round rifle volley and that came about during the Civil War uh, at, at the end of the, the battle during the, the end of the day mm -hmm. during a battle uh, there would be a time of peace mm -hmm. and both sides would go to the battlefield and they would take the uh, dead and wounded from the battlefield mm -hmm. once the field had been cleared they would fire three rounds to let the other side know that they were done okay. uh, so that's where the three round rifle volley came from uh, they carried that over into the practice of doing that at the funeral mm -hmm. taps came about from uh, a general that uh, was a politician and wanted something special and he took the bugle call tattoo the 24 notes mm -hmm. and had his bugler create a new bugle call for lights out it was first used in 1863 for a funeral because of the pro close proximity of the two uh, warring groups they didn't want a fire salute so they played taps at the funeral instead and now to this day that is part of the funeral service uh, a normal funeral service is a mil is a uh, a religious service followed by the military service. Mm -hmm. Three round rifle volleys followed or fired, taps is played, a flag is folded and presented to the next of kin. So that that's a military funeral service. Well, that's very uh, very interesting. I think I knew bits and pieces of that, but yeah. but I think it's so important. Uh, you know, Jim, we we only have a little bit more time left, but I'll ask you the same question that I asked Norm we hear the phrase freedom is free or is not free yeah. what does that mean to you there's a price for everything uh, you go back to the revolutionary war it was paid this country came about with the shedding of blood mm -hmm. uh, we have to do that to continue to have those freedoms that we have uh, the young people that serve this nation today I told you about the looks I saw on the faces of, of the veterans mm -hmm. I see those same looks in those faces today those young men and women that serve this country today understand there's a price to be paid. They understand that it's incumbent on them mm -hmm. to pay that price. And those young men and women today are the finest young men and women you'll ever find in this nation today. When everybody else is running for their safe space, they're running toward the battle, and they're saying, follow me. You can't find anybody better than that. All right. Well, Jim, thank you so much for your Thanks, service. Thanks, Daniel. Thank you for what you continue to do for veterans today. Appreciate it. Thank you. And we will be back to wrap things up on Talk of the Town in just a moment. Talk of the Town will be right back. Cambridge is more than just a town. This is our home. Supporting downtown Cambridge means shopping at the places we love with the people we love. For the stuff we can't get anywhere else. Food that tastes like home. And personal service from people who know your name. The money we spend here will keep our town growing. Let's all shop small for our town. The home we love. And the uniqueness that makes Cambridge a, a great place to live, work, and play. Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge prides themselves on offering the largest inventory and the best customer service in the area. Visit their lot and experience the Classic Difference. The Classic Difference provides customers a service above and beyond what you'll find anywhere else. Their service department, body shop, and parts department strive for the best service and pricing in southeastern Ohio. Stop by the lot and browse their large selection of new and pre-owned inventory, ask about easy financing, or schedule an oil change. That's Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge. Stop by and experience the Classic Difference for yourself. For a show schedule of upcoming guests and to watch past episodes, go to yourradioplace.com. And welcome back to Talk of the Town. I am Daniel Barnett. I am joined now by Joe Morton. Joe is the president of the Guernsey County Veteran Services Commission and uh, served in the Korean War in the Marine Corps and uh, rose to the rank of corporal. So, Joe, thanks for joining me today. Okay, good, good to be here with you. So, Joe, tell me a little bit about how you got involved in the military and, and what your service was in the Korean War. Well, uh, when the Korean War first broke out, uh, I think everybody got a feeling of patriotism. And uh, me and three of my buddies decided we were going to enlist in the Marine Corps, which we did. 
and we all proceed to go to Paris Island for our boot camp. And after we got out of there, uh, three of us went to Camp Pendleton in California mm -hmm. for advanced training. And uh, uh, we were there, and then they shipped us to, to Korea. And I was uh, a machine gunner. Okay. And uh, I was with the uh, uh, weapons company, 2nd Battalion, 5th Marines and uh, spent a year in Korea and uh, ha had, had a few uh, skirmishes with the enemy there. And unfortunately, I came out the loser on one of them because I got wounded after I'd been there for almost a year. And they sent me home and, and uh, after that, uh, I was uh, stationed in Norfolk, Virginia in military police and that was very enjoyable duty mm -hmm. and uh, at the end of my three years I decided that I'd had enough Marine Corps I was going to become a civilian so I went to the University of Dayton and graduated with an engineering degree and went to work for National Cash Register Company I worked for them for 35 years uh, they transferred me down here from Dayton, and when I got to Cambridge, uh, w one of the fellows that worked for me said, you're a veteran, why don't you join the Veterans of Foreign Wars? And no one had ever approached me before, and I think that is one of the problems with the veterans organizations, is the veterans that get out of the service don't realize what's available to them. Mm -hmm. And we try to uh, give those services to all the veterans in Guernsey County, which as a matter of fact, there are 3,229 in Guernsey County. Which is as, a sizable as, part of the population. As of April 1, uh, that was the latest report that we got. And uh, that, that, that's quite a few few members and I would say probably 10 percent of them take advantage of the benefits mm -hmm. that are offered to veterans. So all you veterans out there come down to the Veterans Service Commission office which is in the County Administration Building and talk to uh, one of our two service officers or our administrative assistant and they'll be able to line you up with uh, whatever benefits you have have coming and want want to get involved in. Well, let's talk a little bit about that because I know um, we we talked a little bit before the show started that there are so many services out there that that veterans aren't even aware that they can take advantage of through their service. What are some of the services that you feel? Uh, are the least known or, or the least utilized that maybe could make a huge difference for a veteran? Well, I think one of the big things is we have a community-based outpatient clinic here in Cambridge, mm -hmm. which uh, takes care of your flu shots and your normal medical exams and things like that, as well as, as uh, uh, vision mm -hmm. and uh, we run uh, two vans to the Chillicothe and Cleveland hospitals mm -hmm. uh, every other day for operations and right. things that, that our specialists required. And I think that is one of the big things because you can also get your prescriptions at quite a discount that you would pay if you went to uh, normal pharmacy. Right. Now, obviously, your service has meant a lot to you. Um, you have now taken a large portion of your retirement working for, for veteran services. What, what did the military instill in you that has left you wanting to give back, to give that service in your civilian life? Well, I think the main thing that uh, military life teaches you is uh, to uh, be loyal to the government, 
which uh, everyone should be because they're the ones that provide all the benefits that we really have and uh, it, it's just a matter of uh, follow, following up your military training. So we, we've talked about this with Norm and with Jim. I'm going to ask you now um, the phrase that, that resonates especially on July 4th is freedom isn't always free. What does that mean to you? Well, I, I think what the bottom line on that is uh, I was one of the lucky ones. I returned. There are some of them that didn't. And they're the ones that paid the price for our freedom. And I think that's what the saying, freedom isn't free, comes from. You know, if, if folks, obviously veterans, want more information on the services they can receive, um, or just to get in touch with, with, you know, talking to other veterans, sharing stories, um, how do they get in touch with the Veteran Services Commission? Uh, we're located in the county administration building, mm -hmm. and we have office hours from 8 to 12 and 1 to 4, five days a week. Okay. And there's always someone there that's willing to talk to you. Uh, if you've got any problems, we also provide uh, financial assistance to veterans that are either affected by illness or mm -hmm. loss of their job or anything that makes it hard for them to meet their monthly bills, right. so to speak. Uh, we uh, give assistance up to uh, $1,000 a month. Okay. So best just to stop on in, for them to stop yeah, in and talk yeah, to somebody. Yeah, they, if they need something, they should stop in. If they don't need anything, stop in and talk to us anyway. Okay. Very good. Well, Joe, thank you, of course, for your service. Okay. Appreciate you coming in and talking to us today. And uh, thanks for all you do for our community. Well, I'm more than glad to do it. And we will be back to wrap things up on Talk to the Town in just a moment. We'll be right back with more Talk of the Town. U.S. Bank is the fifth largest bank in the country, and while being recognized nationally for their strength and stability, they continue to provide hometown service. At U.S. Bank, they provide a variety of products and services for your consumer and small business needs, such as free checking with internet banking, loans and lines of credit, and free financial planning services. At U.S. Bank, they're proud to support the growth and development of their communities by helping local business owners achieve success. Bundy Law Funeral Home has worked since 1924 to earn the confidence of the families they have served and continue their commitment to the community. They offer a complete range of quality services, from funerals to cremation, and honor all faiths and customs. The staff at Bundy Law understands you need to know all the available options to make the right decisions for your family. A price list is available upon request, and they invite your comparisons. You will make the right choice when you choose Bundy Law Funeral Home. I'd like to thank our very special guests for today, Norm Blanchard, Jim Gibson, and Joe Morton for coming in, sharing with us their thoughts on their service and on the meeting of freedom. Of course, we are celebrating July 4th this week, and it is very important for us to remember that the freedoms that we enjoy every day are not free. Now, I think it's also important that we look at what uh, Norm, Jim, and Joe said about loving one another, taking care of one another. and trying to find some middle ground in this politically tumultuous time. Uh, we've seen them in our country before. We've talked about the Revolutionary War. We've talked about the Civil War today, the Vietnam War, the Korean War. And uh, while we have our wars abroad, we also have them at home. So I uh, want to thank all those who have served in the military in the past and in the present. And if you're out there watching, take the time this week to go out and shake a vet's hand, tell them thank you, and uh, give them the opportunity to talk about their service as we have here today. If you enjoyed this edition of Talk of the Town, of course, you can find all of our shows on YRP TV, our YouTube channel. They're also available at yourradioplace.com and on our Facebook page, Talk of the Town. I'd like to thank my producer and director, Adam Green, for uh, running things behind the cameras and for giving me the opportunity to step in today and uh, talk to these spectacular veterans about their service. 
for, uh, for Adam Green, for Perry Baranich, your host. Uh, I'm Daniel Barnett, and thanks once again for tuning in to Talk of the Town.